It's the 2K Sports pregame show, sponsored by Kia. With Kenny the Jet Smith and the Big Aristotle, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal, this is Ernie Johnson welcoming you to the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, it's the Washington Wizards as they'll be playing against the Charlotte Hornets. And for Charlotte, these guys are in the doldrums, a real tough stretch with only one win to show for their last nine games. Well, the Hornets seem to have found their man in Steve Clifford. Some very good results from his time as coach in Charlotte. Uh, what does he bring to the team, guys? Well, Clifford is bringing, you know, stability, great approach, and consistency. What more could you want? That's it. And, you know, he's built a team around a defensive mindset. And uh, let me tell you, he was able to weather quite a few injuries last season. Still did pretty well. That about does it for us. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you later. you from the Verizon Center in beautiful Washington DC as the Wizards prepare to take the court this is Kevin Harlan and by my side our analysts Greg Anthony and Doris Burke from the sideline we'll have the Hall of Famer David Aldridge we'll be hearing from him in just a bit the Hornets log another stop on their travel schedule in today's matchup and of course Briante Weber this phase really the integration phase as he's getting into the new flow with his new team an exciting time for him for sure you know the trade you, you were talking about it's not front page news but uh, but I really believe that it could pay huge dividends for this team in the future and before we get underway here let's send it over to Hall of Famer David Aldridge who was able to talk with Steve Clifford so guys you told me their primary focus of the pregame discussion was defense he said they're dealing with a very sophisticated offense and it's going to require an outstanding effort from his players at the defensive end to come out on top. Let's see if that's the effort they get. Guys? Thanks, David. A lot of veteran leadership on these two teams. A lot of guys who have seen a lot of baskets. Uh, Doris, they bring a wealth of experience in so many ways. And Kevin, as a coach, what's more comforting than to know you have a group of guys that know how to play, that aren't going to crack under pressure, that when the game is under duress and you're down to a possession ball game, they're going to have a calm demeanor, just like you, Kevin. <laughs> well, thank you, Doris. But extensions of the coach on the floor. Well, you've got to be able to think like a coach. And certainly, uh, you know, any time that groups have been together, there's this collective experience that helps them win. All right, let's set the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Setting the floor for the Hornets. Kid Gilchrist and Williams are at the forward spots. Jeremy Lamb out there with Kemba Walker. And it's Kaminsky in at the five, roaming the paint. Now Lamb following the three-point attempt by John Wall. How's that for a delicate touch? Perfect release on the floater. Outside, Beal. Here's Morris. Williams with the block. Boy, that's 0 for 3 in the early going. Just a little out of sync. Nobody near Kid Gilchrist. He hits the back iron and sinks the shot. Could be the first of a lot of mid-range jumpers that we see from him. Oh, absolutely. If they're going to allow him that kind of space... He's going to make more than his share of those today. Walker with it. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against the Pacers in Indianapolis. Kid Gilchrist against Porter. Outside, Walker. Just five to shoot. Elbow shot. Well, nice defense right there by John Wall. He's got all the physical tools, length, strength, and quickness. Morris kicks to Gortat, and it's Gortat finishing it off. And that assist got him a little nod from his teammate after that one. For Charlotte, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. Wall against Walker. Here's Kaminsky. Rebound by the Wizards. They come in fresh off a win against the Heat. And Kevin, you know, they should. Oh. oh, how about using the rim 
to get some true hang time. You know, he just wanted to make sure the landing was softer than the takeoff. And that replay is sponsored by Kia, the Kia Slam Cam, giving us a great look at that one. Now, here's Wall, following the miss by Kemba Walker. First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes play. And Gortzak kicks to Porter, and out of bounds as the Hornets gain possession. And a chance now to review the shot chart. Well, they're going to have to look elsewhere for points because he has pulled a Houdini and, and completely disappeared from the offense in this one. Just no production from him, and, and nothing seems to be in rhythm for him right now. It's just not his night. And here's Sharp, defeated by the Pacers in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. And the issues they had defensively, in part, I thought, was a huge factor. Really compounded, I think, because it was a road game for them. Listen, the offense had the crowd's energy to feed off, but it doesn't explain a lack of effort on defense. One thing that the Hornets do very well, as we all know, is at the glass. Top to bottom, this team knows how to close out possessions, Greg, and clean up misses on the defensive end. Yeah, and Kevin, you look at the roster for the Hornets, everyone is helping on the glass. What is odd that they don't have one guy who averaged huge rebound numbers? It's a true team effort. They are one of the elite teams in limiting offensive rebounds. one falls so he hits both of them about three minutes gone here in the first quarter and he's knocked off course by the D the foul called he'll shoot free throws Frank Kaminsky picks one up and one reason why Otto Porter saw a huge increase in his role is that Doris, he was able to develop a three-point shot that had teams, uh, you know, giving him a lot of respect, and then they had to adjust to it. He was always strong going to the rim, but now defenses had to follow him out to that three-point line. Well, as you know, Kevin, having a consistent three is such a big deal now for perimeter players. Porter at 6'8 has a smooth release and no problem shooting over the arms of smaller defenders who might rotate to him. And he's developed a nice little pull-up shot. If teams ever overextend, he can just step back and knock down a two. So one for two that time with the strike. Well, 2016 guys saw a great stride for Otto Porter in his career. He got off to that slow start, remember, the first two years. But finally, when he got consistent minutes, he answered nicely. Career highs across the board for him. And you can see why this team thinks he's got a bright future. Now here's Lamb following the miss by John Wall. Shots good by Walker. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. Gord's out with a screen on Walker. Outside, Wall. Morris, outside. Five to shoot. Back to Wall. On deep. That's in for the first basket of the game after three attempts. And with Porter, so many were quick to dismiss his play scores in the NBA after a few slow years to start his career. And I think, Kevin, that goes back to where he was picked in the draft, third overall. And when you're a top three pick, fans want instant production. And Porter was always the kind of player that needed time to adjust to this league. Luckily, the organization believed in him, stuck with him. He's made huge improvements across the board. Washington shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And they now lead as the free throw drops for him. Boy, when you see Markeith Morris, you can't help but think about what went down in Phoenix with him. There certainly was some fighting going on between him and other teammates. He demanded a trade several times, eventually just taken out of the rotation, even though his skill was good enough to be on the floor. And Morris drops them both. 
with Morris and his Phoenix exit. Eventually, Doris, he was traded to the Wizards, and that was a move that was probably best for everyone involved. Right, Kevin. It, it made you wonder why they didn't do it sooner. Things started to go south in Phoenix when Marquis felt betrayed by the organization for trading his brother away. And luckily, all that's in the past, and Marquis can focus on just playing basketball. Now, here's Wall following the miss by Kemba Walker. And Wall kicks to Morris. And another miss by Washington. Boy, clear breakdown on defense. They're, they're fortunate that he didn't make them pay. Charlotte trailing. And here's Walker. Scoring-wise, he's definitely making his mark. Right now, he's averaging about 19 points a game. Well, he's trying to shoot his way out of this slump, but it's not helping his team. That was an awful quarter. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. Here's Gortat. And count the basket. He was fouled, That's and he's good. going to the line for one more. And it just Three seems one. that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Cody Zeller's checked in for Kaminsky. You know, just looking at Marcin Gortat in his career, it's hard to find a more consistent player at that center spot. You know, he always shoots an efficient rate from the floor, doesn't miss a lot of time due to injuries, and you can always expect him to be available. Now here's Lamb. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against the Pacers in Indianapolis. Offensive rebound. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Boy, terrific reaction to that missed shot. Reads right where it comes off the glass for the putback. With Gortat, he's been a double-double machine for teams ever since he became a starter. Well, I think it just speaks to the effort that Gortat gives on the floor, Kevin. You know he's going to use that great footwork to get you scores from the low box. And you also like that he can get your production without needing the offense to run through him. The Wizards shooting their sixth and seventh free throws in the game. And 74% has been the mark for them on the season thus far. And that one falls for Beal. You know, I think with the injuries that Bradley Beal has had to deal with in his career, it has taken a toll on his development. He's never played a full season in the NBA, and it's pretty hard to maximize your game when you're always fighting back from injury. And both free throws good for Beal. With Beal, he said himself that he might need to be on a minute restriction for the rest of his career. Doris, that's not a good sign. No, it's not, Kevin. And in the past, Beal has played quite a bit every time he's been available. So this would be a tough adjustment if that happens. For Beal, you need to do whatever it takes to stay healthy on the floor. He's a big-time talent, but he can't help his team if he's injured more often than not. Walls shot is off. Hornets trail by five. Williams dishes to Walker. Over in the corner, Zeller. Back to Walker. Six to shoot. There's the dish to land. Not enough on that one as it misses. Wizards leading by five. Morris passes to Porter. Let's it go from deep. The Hornets pull it in. Williams has got his fourth rebound in this one. The rebound by Gortat. Gortat's got eight rebounds in this game. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Gortat. I think he just got nervous there, guys. Not sure what he was going for there. Smith checked in for Morris. And then for Charlotte. Graham's checked in. And it's Briante Weber in for Lamb. And defense, such a huge part of winning in the NBA. All championship teams, all championship players have it. Doris, which players do you think are the best of the best on the defensive end of the floor? Well, I think DeAndre Jordan has got to be considered uh, in terms of his ability to protect the rim. The, the Clippers changed their defensive coverages this year, and they allow him to be at the rim a little bit more, which is a driver. You're sitting there thinking, boy, I don't want to meet DeAndre at the rim. I think you have to look at an underrated guy because of his versatility and ability to guard guys like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Sirius. 
series after series that would be Andre Iguodala unbelievable strength terrific hands a uh, physicality in terms of his frame to be able to absorb contact uh, those are the two guys to me different positions but really huge factors great way to put it now here's Sessions following the miss by Kemba Walker and Sessions kicks to Zeller Graham the pass to Wood makes it off the glass Wizards leading by three. Smith with a screen on Sessions. Wall dishes to Smith. He kicks to Mahimi. And it's Wall in the corner. A three-pointer is right on target. Wall's got six. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. A nice shot by Zeller. Now Meeks, and looking at his production, he averages a little more than seven points a game. Outside, Wall, and Wall with the slam. And you see the remarkable athleticism of John Wall sailing in for the flush. Inside, here's Zeller, and the dunk by Zeller. Yeah, just solid work on the back end of that play. Yep, you're right. Finish hard with two hands on that stuff. Outside, Wall. To the middle, Mahimi. It's rebounded by Charlotte. A stellar defense to alter that shot. You could tell his release was a tad awkward. They get it back. Washington leading now by four. Shoots from the baseline, buries the jump shot. Charlotte has gone 0-3 from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. Now here's Sessions. D right on him. No good. Shot missing. Now the Wizards take it the other way. Wall against Sessions. Here's Smith. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. And now an eight-point Washington lead. Pass to Wood. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. They are just killing him on the interior. And Washington making a change here. Sadoransky's checked in. The Hornets shooting their third free throw attempt of the game. Not really where you'd like to be as a team in terms of free throw shooting. Just about 73%. Here's Meeks. Passes it to Sadoransky. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. Zeller's got his third rebound tonight. Here's Graham. Pass to Weber. The feed to Zeller. Now here's Sessions. Shot clock at five. For three. The Hornets rebound. And the rejection by Smith. And Meeks kicks to Ubre. Here's Sadoransky. It's rebounded by Charlotte. This their first look at this year's Washington spot. And going back to last year, this series was an even split. Washington leading now by five. In the corner, it's Ubre. That one drops for him. Ubre's got his first two points. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. Come to me, come to me. Here's the screen. Here's Zeller. That ball's great assist by Ramon Sessions. Sessions has got his fourth assist in this one. Washington's gone two of five from three-point land here in the first quarter. 112 left to play here in the first. The shot by Shadaransky, no good. Hornets trail by five. Dishes it to Sessions. Weber with it, and there's the pass to Wood. Kicks it to Sessions. He feeds it to Zeller. Rebound by Smith. 
The Wizards shooting 45% from the field early. Here's Oubre. It's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And Kelly Oubre, the Kansas Jayhawk product, still a very raw player, but the team, Doris, has high hopes for him and show flashes of what he's capable of doing when he's on the floor. I think, Kevin, with Oubre, what you like is how well he can finish at the rim. He has got great lift, gets off the ground quickly, which is a huge shot. help to being able to finish Two inside. Shot. And you like the manner in which he aggressively attacks the rim. He plays with so little hesitation. Free throw, good, Oubre. Now you look at the physical gifts for Kelly Oubre. Six foot seven, but with a seven foot two wingspan. He's a terrific leaper, and he's got great potential defensively. And both free throws, good for Oubre. And they've clearly been the aggressors here early on, drawing fouls and working themselves to the line. And the dunk by Zeller. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Yeah, and an example of why you want to let the game come to you. The opening presented itself, he converted in a big way. Meeks. Nice concentration to hit the double clutch layup. Meeks got his second bucket tonight. You know, we're never opposed to a little creativity. And, ooh, did he have plenty of that? The double pump having some fun. And here's Sessions. Wyatt so far offensively searching for his first points of the game. That three off the mark. Meeks. And we reach the end of the first quarter. Washington out in front. They lead by seven. We'll be back shortly live from the Verizon Center. A chance to hear from Bradley Beal. He came from a football family in St. Louis, but said his mother introduced him to the game of basketball at a young age. She definitely put the ball in my hands. She's the one who taught me my form, my follow through, and, and still to this day, she yells at me if I miss a shot. So she's kind of a perfectionist, and she definitely taught me how to shoot. She can shoot it, and she still to this day thinks she can shoot better than me. <laughs> Maybe some other NBA players should be practicing with Bradley Beal's mom because she uh, has definitely honed something special into him. To be sure. Now, I'm just not sure some of the more delicate NBA egos could handle her trash talking once she beats them in a game of horse. All right, the second quarter beginning in just a moment. And what stands out to you from Washington in this one? Defense paying huge dividends for them through the first. You know, this is a savvy group. They know when to body up and play physical and when to back off. Beal and Porter are out on the wing. Morris pairs with Gortat down low. And it's Sadaransky in at the one. That's the group on the floor right now for Washington. Now here's Walker. He dishes it to Lamb. Kaminsky kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Kaminsky sets the pick for Kid Gilchrist. Six on the shot clock. Lamb passes to Kaminsky. Williams dishes to Kaminsky. And he wills that one in, sinking right through off the back iron. Wizards leading by five. Gortat with a screen on Walker. And Zedaransky kicks to Gortat. The shot will not fall. Regardless of that miss right there, that's a shot you want him taking. He practices that all the time, makes a ton of them. Walker's shot is off. Washington shooting in this game, 45%. Here's Sodoronsky, guarded by Walker. Here's Porter. It's tipped. Side, Walker. Williams has a screen for Walker to the inside. Kaminsky. Portot with the block. 
The swat by Gortat. He doesn't chase blocks, but he can send them back. Peel's shot is good. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here it is eye-opening. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. And Walker kicks to Kaminsky. And again, the Hornets missing. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Alden. Well, guys, the Charlotte Hornets made a concerted effort last season to improve what had been terrible three-point shooting. Coach Steve Clifford said, if you look at trends in this league, three-point shooting percentage was the number one factor why teams won. That's the way this league is gone. It makes sense, right? It creates spacing, which opens up things for everybody else. Kevin? Yeah, trying to space the floor. Thank you, D.A. And for the Wizards, health has been a problem. Last season, the third most games missed Doris to injury in the league. And Kevin, think about this. A player like John Wall, who managed to stay on the floor, he was hampered by injury. And they say the best ability is availability. Like any team, the Wizards need to be close to full strength to really be successful. And Kevin, plays like that, really the reason they've got a nice lead right now. Just a great job on the glass. And Greg, the jam and the follow gets their whole bench jumping. Look at them. They are really into it. The other bench deflated because that was a rough sequence for the defense. They hated to give up those points but did nothing to stop it. John Walls jumped in for Washington. Wizards on D. They lead by their biggest margin of the game. Nine. Walker's shot is off. And battling hard on the glass. They hold the advantage here so far. Wall dishes to Morris. Wall passes to Porter. Back to Wall. Just five on the clock. And it's good. Off through contact. It's the shot. He'll go to the free throw line. And a physical finish by Wall. And if you're defending, you've got to get your money's worth. You know, it seems to me on a regular basis, we see John Wall do something on the basketball court that makes your jaw drop. His ability to find open players with his passing, the way he can get to the hoop, making the most complex moves seem pedestrian. With Wall, he really does seem to make the spectacular Sorry, happen on a regular Sorry, basis. Doris, Sorry. he's helped by the fact that he has unparalleled athleticism at his position. Well, no doubt, Kevin. This may be the most gifted athlete at the guard spot in the league. And once that was Wall's main strength, but he has taken big steps to shore up the rest of his game. His passing and decision-making have come a long way, and he continues to find ways to be a better point guard. You know what? They just are in a funk right now offensively. A good time to maybe come and come up with a play to get them a good look. Yeah, they're pressing. No question. Forcing things that aren't really there. And some great passing here so far. Let's check out this chart that breaks down where the assists have been coming from for Charlotte. This backcourt is really shouldering the load in terms of the ball movement and great assists. When you look at the overall contributions compared to the bigs, Nice work on distributing the ball. And it's out of bounds. The Hornets able to retain possession here. Let's take a look here at the numbers for Porter. His last 10 games, averaging nine points per game, five rebounds, and two assists. And, and some pretty good numbers, guys. He's certainly making a contribution. Knocked loose. Kid Gilchrist with it. Now guarded by Porter. And there's the basket. Whistle blows and a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line for one. How about the concentration? He gets hit, but stays with the play and gets the finish. Well, Doris, of course, we all know you've had a chance to meet and interview so many coaches and players throughout the NBA. What are some of the best things about them? Yeah, I think maybe the most surprising thing about interviewing NBA players in particular is they are very much like you and I. There are periods of great confidence, uh, but if they start to struggle, just like you and I, their confidence can come and go, and they need positive reinforcement. I, I think the thing I've learned is most often NBA players, aside from the great and sort of distinguishing skill, they are people first and foremost. Yeah, his shot's been out of sync, and it really has held them back tonight. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Walker. Here's the 2K leaderboard. These teams have been fantastic from three-point land in the last 10. 
the Wizards second. You know, they've certainly been knocking down threes at a high rate. You can just see their confidence growing. Moore as a screen. And Beal kicks to Gortat. And it's Gortat finishing it off. Now listen, this guy's got the green light at any time. But Beal with the nice look to set up the open shot. To the paint. Here's Kaminsky. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. Walker's got his third assist on the night. He's been lights out here in the second, and that's after a pretty good showing in the first. Wizards leading by nine. Now Walt. He had 16 points in the win against Miami. Off the pick. Bounces high off the rim and drops. That's now eight points for Beal. Charlotte's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Wall against Walker. Feeds it to Lamb. The dish now to Kaminsky. Gortat with the block. And he recovers it. Wizards have gone 6 of 9 in the second quarter. Some good work from the field. Here's Beal. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. That's on Marvin Williams. Well, for Bradley Beal, he's just an incredible three-point shooter. And Doris always has been since he came into the league out of Florida after growing up in the St. Louis area. Well, think about this, Kevin. Beal has never averaged less than four three-point attempts a game in his career. This is one of the Shoot most two. consistent three-point threats in the NBA, and his shot is effortless. With how well this guy shoots, you almost wish he could shoot more often and see how far he can take his game. The first one falls. The third pick back in 2012 after one season at Florida. Beal is one to watch. Such an exciting talent. Second free throw, no good. And the one thing for the Hornets, I mean, they, they had horrible luck last season from an injury standpoint. Never really able to put that starting five out there for any consistent stretch of the season. I mean, huge injuries to Big Al and MKG were, were the most notable, and, and that really dampens your ability to develop chemistry. It's hard not to go for it when you see the chance for that alley-oop. So much of this game is played loose above the rim, but you still have to convert to count it. Kid Gilchrist, no luck. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor, and it's all adding up. And for the Hornets, injuries are a tough obstacle to overcome. They were able to fight through some of that, but surely it slowed them down. Yeah, Kevin, it's just hard to get into a rhythm when you're missing key components. Luckily, though, I think it gave the Hornets a chance to give minutes to younger guys and get them some confidence. Here is Porter. Frank Kaminsky making his last shot. Porter dishes to Morris. Outside wall. Just five on the clock. 13 feet away. Again, the miss by Morris. Well, uh, you know, they're in the lead, but he's still been frustrated from an offensive standpoint. Gortat with the block. Ooh, his shot is way off. Someone else is going to have to step up scoring-wise if they're going to be competitive. And Wall kicks to Beal. Back to Wall. To the wing right side. Here's Porter. And it doesn't even draw iron. Great looking defense, really, just to disrupt the rhythm on that shot. Yeah, he took a solid angle, didn't block the attempt, but still forced the miss. Time for out, the Wizards, Smith checked in for Markeith Morris. Oubre right. comes in for Porter, and it's Jody Meeks in for Beal. And clearly, Steve Clifford wants to talk it over. And Doris, with the behind the scenes access you've had for so many years, what are some things that fans don't get a chance to see, experience in the NBA? Yeah, I think one thing that uh, I marvel at is how seriously these men take their job. This is not, uh, yes, they are well compensated, but by and large, these men will take your heart out to get a spot on an NBA roster. And it's their vocation as opposed to their job. Uh, these men are passionate about the league. They have incredible work habits, and I'm in awe of how hard they work. Are you surprised, too, at the playbook? I, I, people just think these plays just kind of happen. 
every play is I mean, there is some script or design for every play it drives me crazy when people say they'll only watch the NBA in the final two minutes because that's when the game's decided we are talking about the best players the best athletes and the best coaching there is in any level and to me you're doing a disservice if you don't watch the full 48 great points Wizards leading by 12. Wall passes to Meeks. Over to the left wing. Mahimi dishes to Smith. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Just a terrific delivery into the low post. Love to get those buckets nice and close. High percentage shots. Sessions against Wall. Weber lets it go with a three. Weber can't get that one to fall. What a great opportunity. Nice open look. You'll take those anytime you can get an uncontested shot. Oubre kicks to Mahimi. And Mahimi with the stop. And the one-hand slam just looks so pretty when it's in his hand and he's the one doing the slam. Agreed. He is smooth as silk, even on a power finish. Now here's Sessions. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Pass to Mahimi. Let's it go. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. Oh, the, the officials are all over that one. This is his first free throw of the game. Not the best statistic for him in terms of his performance at the line. Very low numbers. That one is off. Now for the Wizards, we know their playoff hopes always hinge on the continued all-star play of point guard John Wall. He's the engine. There's no doubt that makes everything go for this team offensively. And he's good on the second. And Doris, the Wizards, one of the better passing teams in the league last season, tied for third most assists, and the turnover's not bad at all. Well, I think, Kevin, so much of the play creation responsibility falls on John Wall's shoulders. And to become more dynamic offensively, I think they need other players on their roster to be more active breaking down the defense. And that one's good. Sessions. You know, the D backs off in three-point territory. He'll take that shot all day long. Here's Wall. He's got 11. Down low. Throws it down as the official calls the foul. It may be a three-point play. It goes on Cody Zeller. The pick-and-roll game paying dividends. Wall with another delivery. He does a great job of drawing contact and getting himself to the line, something he didn't do in the first period. Sessions passes to Weber. It's a nice pass in here by Charlotte. Zeller, a screen on wall. Here's Sessions. He kicks to Zeller. Shot clock at six. Shoots the three. And that one is off. And it's Washington the other way. Solid rebound there, and with the score like it is, that's an area where they can't afford to get lazy. Passes it to Mahimi, and stolen by Zeller. Here's Weber. Weber can't get that one to fall. No idea why he's attempting so many outside shots. It's not his day, and he needs to either look to drive or get it to an open teammate. Smith kicks to Wall. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. That's on Sessions. Well, we all know John Wall has been the subject of media scrutiny during his tenure in D.C. And so much expected out of him that when the team comes up short, obviously the blame falls on him. He is the leader, but it's sometimes it feels as if he's the only player to get blamed. And that one falls for Wall. 
Well, with Wall and the media, Wall himself said that he'll make sure to read every critical piece about him. The thinking is, uh, Doris, he can't just read articles when you're playing well. He'll use any criticism as motivation. And isn't that, Kevin, exactly what the great players do? They find motivation wherever they can. And I think you have to give credit to John Wall for not shying away from criticism, right? What makes you get better other than when people are challenging you? Washington leading now by 16. Smith sets the pick for Wall. Pass to Mahimi. Over in the corner, Meeks. Outside, Wall. Here's Oubre. Here's Mahimi. Tries again. And stolen by Zeller. Poked away. Mahimi dishes to Meeks. Throws it up high. Tries to save it. Smith kicks to Wall. It's good. The assist that time from Smith. And that's 15 points for Wall. You know, he's been so accurate from the floor tonight, really helping them stay ahead. Pick by Zeller. Sessions passes to Zeller. And the Wizards looking to build a new practice facility south of the Verizon Center on the grounds of the former St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Uh, doors expected to be completed in 2018. And Kevin, this is a project that will include housing and retail space, a 5,000-seat arena for the women's basketball team. Nice to see some development in a neighborhood, Ward 8, that could use the extra tax dollars. Sadaransky's checked in for John Wall. And so Zeller nails both of them. And guys, this is the way to stay in the game. They're, they're doing a masterful job from the line. Perfect this quarter. Screen by Smith. Emma Himi has it in the corner. And Zedaransky kicks to Mahimi. He's got free throw attempts number four and five here. Two shots. That free throw missing. Good on the second free throw. 44 seconds left now here in the second. Now here's Sessions. Currently averaging almost six points a game. Fades away. Wood can't hit. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. And Zedaransky kicks to Ubra. Smith, the pass to Sadaransky. Ice ball movement by Washington. Five on the clock. Mahimi dishes to Meeks. Offline with his three. Weber doesn't get it to drop for him. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Wizards lead by 18. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Kevin, thanks. Here with Coach Clifford. What was the biggest problem for your guys in the first half? Well, you know what? We're a defensive team first, and we've been good defensively. We've been organized. We weren't that in that first half, and that's what we got to concentrate on to get the game going back our way. See if you revert back to your form in the second half. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson, joined by Kenny Smith, right there, and Shaquille O'Neal, he's right there. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. 
It was a great half of basketball from John Wall. He ended up with 15 points, five assists, and one block. In their previous game, he had a performance he said he wanted to put behind him quickly, and so far he's doing just that with the nice first half he had here. And let's get your thoughts, Kenny, on the Wizards. Well, John Wall was electric. His end-to-end -end speed is unmatchable. And when he isn't setting up his teammates, he's killing you with those elbow jumpers or even going downtown. If he continues this in the second half and the defense can't find an answer to slow him down, they'll be tough to beat. Shaq, let's get your insight on Charlotte. Way too soft in the paint defensively. They were all late on their rotations. Obviously, that's a recipe for getting cooked. And you know, I like eating that barbecue chicken. They gotta do better, Ernie. And that's it for halftime as the second half is just about to get underway. See you after the game. Welcome back, folks. A lot to see in that shot from high above Washington, the Capitol, the Supreme Court, the Lincoln Memorial. That is one heck of a view. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. An exceptional performance from John Wall. You, you know, we talk so often about making your teammates better and his ability to see the floor and then make those passes on time in that first half was the key. You know, I'm not sure the defense respected that as part of his arsenal. They weren't looking for him to make plays, and it burned them. On the court for the Hornets... Kid Gilchrist and Williams are at the forward spots. Kemba Walker is out there with Jeremy Lamb, and it's Kaminsky in its center. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been flawless. And here's Walker. Add to the three-pointer from Bradley Beal. Count that one. And that's just a great individual play right through the teeth of the defense. Wizards leading by 19. Outside wall. The feed now to Gorzot. Back to wall. Goes up the baseline. Hornets with the rebound. Kaminsky's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. The shot by Williams, no good. And honestly, not real happy with the shot selection on that one. He knows it. He just got locked into scoring mode and couldn't get out of it. Now here's Wall. Dishes it to Morris. Back to Wall. Baseline try. And there's Morris. That's good on the assist from Wall. Wall's got assist number seven for him tonight. Oh, Morris making things look easy right now. What a rhythm. Kaminsky misses. Yeah, terrific all-around effort from the defense. They were not going to let him finish over them. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, the league and NBA teams have become much more aware of protecting players' health, and they're finding out that rest and sleep are a huge part of that. Warriors head coach Steve Kerr said medicine and science have improved, and thought processes do as well. He said in the old days, guys played 48 minutes. Well, we've made advances. We don't go backwards with this stuff. We go forwards. Guys, that's why they want their players off their feet as much as possible. Good report, D.A., thank you. Inside. The kick out to Walker. And the pass to Williams. He feeds it to Lamb. He dishes it to Kid Gilchrist. Outside Williams. Takes a three. Charlotte gets it back. Wow, just getting all the luck right now, it seems. Good bounce. And that's right where they wanted to go with the ball in rhythm. Washington leading now by 23. Left side wall. There's the lob to Gortat. Outside for Beal. There's the triple. They get it back. Outside wall. And three chances on that possession. But they just couldn't find a way to score. Williams kicks to Walker. Back to Williams. Good work defensively by Morris. For Washington, they've gone an even 50% from the floor here in the third quarter. Four of eight. Wall, a special move before the shot. 
Wall's got 19 points. Well, that's a big time finisher around the rim. Wall makes it look easy. Timeout. Charlotte calls oh, timeout. There are a lot of great things that Gorjot does on the floor, Doris, but you feel that he doesn't sometimes get enough credit for his rebounding. Well, I think you'd probably concur with that, Kevin, because year after year, Gortat is near the top of the league in rebounding. This guy's one of the best at tipping the ball to himself to secure the rebound. And not only does he get a lot, Kevin, but he does it in limited amounts of time. There are a lot of guys getting a lot more minutes at that position. And look now at the various locations of the shots taken so far. What a display we've seen from them so far. Every half open look they've gotten, they've knocked down and showed no signs of letting up. Right now, they are in the driver's seat. As long as they can keep their rhythm on offense, they'll just steamroll this team the rest of the way. Third quarter action in just under three and a half minutes have gone. Shots good by Williams. The D a little bit too concerned about the ball going inside on the inbound play. They forgot to guard that perimeter. Gortat with a screen on Walker. Here's Wall. That counts. He's put up 13 shots, and he's had eight of those go in. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. There's Kaminsky, and uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not, but sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. This will be his fourth shot at the line in this one. With the new TV deal, Doris, a lot of good things in the NBA's future. Is this the golden era of the NBA? I think that this is the golden era, but it's the golden era because of the level of stars that we have. You have LeBron James, a once-in-a-generation player. Steph Curry redefining the very definition of a good shot. Uh, I do not like the criticism that these players have been under of late. I know I did not play in the old NBA, Kevin, uh, but to me, we need to celebrate the game as it's presently composed, and that's, to me, the special part. Now, Lamb after Markeith Morris's three-pointer that didn't go. Clock at four. Here's Walker. Again, the miss by Walker. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. All with it. 21 points in the game. Morris, a screen. Wall passes to Beal. He had stolen by Lamb. And here is Williams. He's got five. To the paint. Knocked away. The shot by Kaminsky. Nobody around. And it's good assisting on the play was Williams. Kaminsky's got eight here in the quarter. Washington leading now by 18. Outside wall. Morris outside. Kicks it to Porter. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Well, folks, tonight a great rebounding game we're watching in progress. And now, you know, with that in mind, let's take a look at the all-time record for rebounds in a single game. How about Will Chamberlain with 55 rebounds back on November 24th, 1960? And, and guys, that's one of those records that always seemed to me impossible to break. I mean, in the modern era, nobody's even sniffed that 55 rebound mark. I mean, heck, a lot of teams don't get 55 rebounds in a game, and Wilt's owned it since 1960. And he knocks down the first one. I just look at a guy like Otto Porter, and it seems like he's coming into his own in this league. He scuffled a bit, certainly, in his first season, but a key piece for this group moving forward. Sadoransky's checked in for Washington. And Porter drops them both. Hornets trail by 20. Ball stolen. Here's Morris. Poke loose. Beal dishes to Gorzak. Here's Sadoransky. 
Sweet little floater. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. Now, here's Walker. And the basket by Kaminsky. And really, the scoring this quarter has been just off the charts, doing all he can to bring them back. Here's Sodoronsky. Outside, Beal. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Now Lamb. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Wizards leading by 18. Here's Sodoronsky outside Beal. Beyond the arc. Beal with another miss. Charlotte has gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Williams up and in on the layup. Williams has got seven now in this quarter. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Here's Sodoronsky. Moore as a screen. And Beal kicks to Morris. Williams with the steal. And Kaminsky with a clear path to the hoop. And it's sent back by Morris. And when Morris is protecting the rim with that kind of effort, what a lift for his group. Porter, no luck. Hornets trail by 16. Feeds it to Walker. Nice pass in here by Charlotte. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> That's a major league throwdown. Keeps a tight grip on that rim, too, after the finish. And the highlight reel replay brought to you by Kia. Good stuff on that Kia slam cam. Here's Morris following the bucket by the Hornets. They set the pick. Beal up top. There's the dish to Gortat. No good. And they can't put an end to this drought. Pass to Walker. Kaminsky sets the pick for Walker. Fires from the wing. Hornets keep it alive. And that's a good job of just getting after it on the backboard. Gets him another possession and allows them to run even more clock. Here's Sodoronsky. Back to Porter. Morris outside. Puts one up from 19. And lots of contact there. He's in the shot. He'll shoot two. Kemba Walker picks one up. No question, he got bumped on that shot. Shooting for Washington, Tomas Sadoransky. Two shots. The first free throw is good. And a new group getting ready for the Wizards. Mahimi's checked in for Gortat. Smith comes in for Markeith Morris. Oubre is checked in for Otto Porter Jr. And it's Jody Meeks in for Beal. And so he's able to get one of two. It's tipped. Hornets trail by 15. And Sessions kicks to Graham. Now here's Sessions. They set the pick to the inside. Here's Zeller. Rebound by Mahimi. Mahimi's got his fifth rebound in this one. Meeks passes to Oubre. Here's Mahimi. And count the basket. He was fouled, and he's going to the line for one more. Uh, you have to love that passing, Kev. Just the right amount of zip on that bounce pass. This will make four trips to the line so far in the game. That free throw good for Mahimi. Charlotte has gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. Picked by Zeller. Here's Sessions and the rejection by Mahimi. Passes it to Zeller. That's tipped. Oubre with the steal. Oh. 
Mahimi kicks to Meeks. Pass to Sadoransky. Back to Meeks. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. I mean, even from over here, you can see that one pretty clearly. And he's got his first free throw of the game. This season, he has been absolutely locked in at the free throw line. How about 90%? That's good for Meeks. And good job bringing that free throw percentage up here in the second half. Doing a great job at the line. And so Meeks nails both of them. Hornets trail by 20. Sessions with it. They set the screen. And the pass to Wood. Here's Weber. A three-pointer off the mark. It's almost like he's trying to make things hard on himself. You know, he's just got to slow the game down. Try to get some easy ones. Connects from three-point range. Oh, he's devastating from distance. Feathery touch has the height to shoot over everyone. And there's a minute 45 left to play here in the third. Looking to end the run. Goes back up. And there's the basket as Sessions finishes it off. Sessions has got five now. Wizards leading by 21. Well, one of the more consistent backup point guards in the league right here with Ramon Sessions. He doesn't try to do too much. Just goes about running the offense, keeping the team dangerous when the second unit is in. I think you have to like the consistency you know you're going to get from him. Now, here's Oubre. Goes back up. Weber pulls it in. And a fast break now for the Hornets. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And with Sessions, the key is consistency, as you mentioned, Doris. Really, with any successful backup league guard, you want to know what to expect every game out. All right, I think, Kevin, for Adelman, Sessions, he's been shots. in the league long enough to two know shots. what works and what doesn't work for him. And even in his later years, he's been more selective, smarter with the shots he takes, and when he takes them. The pickier Sessions is on the court, the better player he tends to be. The first one falls. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. And uh, 101 left in the third. To the middle. Here's Mahimi. Here's Sodoronsky. He's covered by Sessions. Here's Mahimi. And count the basket. He is fouled. And he's going to the line for one more. And not quite as aggressive from outside as they were in the first half. Sticking to the high percentage shots. Playing smart with the lead. So far tonight, he's gone four of six at the line. And this team will make you pay when they get chances at the free throw line. It's helped them pull ahead here today. And Sessions kicks to Weber. It's stolen by Smith. And here we go. Washington fast break. Meeks leading the charge. No good that time. Charlotte's gone 2 of 5 with the three-point shot since coming out of the break. Got that bucket in in no time at all. <laughs> wow, risky shot there size-wise. But the incredible skill that he possesses allows that one to go. Oh, no doubt. I mean, because of the size difference, that's probably not the one-on-one -on -one matchup they'd like to go to very often, but it worked that time. And here's Oubre. Six to shoot. 
Washington needs to get a shot off here. Meeks, good. Meeks got four this quarter. And at the end of the third quarter, a huge lead in this one may already have been decided. Wizards out front, ending the third quarter on a 14-6 run. We'll be back shortly live from the Verizon Center. And thanks again for joining us. Let's see what happens here in the fourth. Here's Beal. Wall and Beal, the incredible backcourt tandem. Jason Smith is out there with Jody Meeks, and it's Mahimi in at the center position. That's the five on the floor for the Wizards. Now Kaminsky, and a wide open look for Walker. Good on the triple. Walker's got the first basket as we get going in the fourth for the Hornets. Wizards leading by 19. Outside wall. He kicks to Mahimi. Wall attacking. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Yeah, took it aggressively right at the defense and it pays off. Wall making it happen as usual. Shooting for Washington. John Wall. Taking two shots. And that one falls for Wall. And one difference this have is that when they get to the line, they're converting. The Wizards making a switch here. Porter's checked in. Kid Gilchrist, he's checked in for Charlotte. And so John Wall nails both of them. And that puts him right around 90 from the free throw line. Really good work here in the second half. Sessions dishes to Kaminsky. The shot's good. Sessions making the play. Sessions has got his sixth assist on the night. Wall passes to Smith. Mahimi a screen. Sessions against Beal. Yep, that one goes. And the Wizards lead by 21. I like the commitment from Bradley Beal to take it inside and attack the defender. And Walker kicks to Sessions. Down low, here's Kaminsky. And the rejection by Mahimi. And stolen by Williams. And a fast break now for the Hornets. And the basket by Kaminsky. Kaminsky's got four this quarter. Oh, since the break, his efficiency has gone up a notch. Looking really polished now. Here is Wall. Right side, Beal. Rebounded by Kaminsky. Kaminsky's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. Williams can't hit. Wizards leading by 19. Porter dishes to Mahimi. Inside, here's Smith. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. First free throw is good. And a moment now to discuss injuries. Something, Doris, that all teams have to deal with, the most players as well from time to time. 
Let's get your take on what's the key to staying healthy. Well, I think obviously most professional athletes realize that they have a limited window with which to make money with their body. And so if you are smart from the time you enter the league going all the way through your career, you're doing the right things. You're getting the proper rest. You're paying attention to nutrition. You're getting massages. You're going to the chiropractor. You're taking all kinds of both proactive and preventative steps to stay healthy. From a league perspective, this is obviously crucial because they know that the players are their most important commodity. And so you're starting to see individual teams and organizations track the movements of their players, both in practice and in games. That kind of data is critical because if you see somebody wearing down, if the data is in fact telling you, okay, Dwayne Wade has run far too much in the last week, let's dial back practice. Let's sit him one game. Um, I think the key is just continue to use data and continue to use what we now know and what we will know in the future to try to protect guys. Markeith Morris has checked in for Washington. And Porter drops them both. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. It's a nice pass in here by Charlotte. Here's Kaminsky. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Kaminsky's got six points in the quarter. Huge hole in the defense that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. Morris a screen. Porter with it. Picked up by Kid Gilchrist. Got a piece of it. And Kid Gilchrist throws it down. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was so quick to break on that one. A good sign that he read the play. And Washington has possession. After the basket by Charlotte. And another miss by Washington. In transition, here come the Wizards. Beals running, and the slam dunk by Wall. I tell you, he's getting after it on the offensive end. Wall is doing work. Hornets trail by 20. The feed to Walker. Williams against Morris. Lamb, good, and it's Williams who picks up the assist. Fantastic ball movement. They're picking them apart with their passing. Washington's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. Five of 12. Wall passes to Beal. Count that one. And the Wizards lead by 20. Love to see a shooter like Beal mixing it up on the interior. Now here's Walker. To the paint. Here's Kaminsky, and he uses the glass on the layup. Kaminsky's got 29 in the game. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. Outside, Wall. To the inside. And now here comes Williams, leading the break. He gets that one to drop. He's now 5 of 12. That's the 10th straight point they've given up in the paint. Wall against Walker, and Kemba Walker is going to pick up the foul. That's his third foul of the game. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Gortat's checked in for Ian Mahini. Walker against Wall. And Walker slams it home. Goodness, that move was just nasty. Hornets trail by 18. Walker with it.
The shot, no good. Gorjant with the defensive effort. Wizards have gotten just under 45% of their attempts to drop in the fourth. Four of nine. Three-pointer. And it's Walker that time on the assist from Marvin Williams. Williams has got his sixth assist on the night. And Wall kicks to Porter. Wall against Kid Gilchrist. It's blocked. And the foul called on Markeith Morris. That's his third foul of the game. And so here's Charlotte, down by 15. Just waiting for a chance to make a play, and when the pass was made, he's all over it. Just a fantastic steal. Wow, the floor just really opened up for him on that possession. That's an excellent finish on the break, getting all the way to the cup for an easy one. Now, here's Walker, double team on Williams. It's tipped. Gortat with the block. The dive for the ball. And that'll be Charlotte as it goes out of bounds. Hornets retain possession. Lamb. Beal pulls it in. Well, he, he gets it in close, but you have to credit that stifling defense for forcing the miss. I'll tell you, just his mere presence inside, his instincts for altering shots, exceptional. Now here's Wall after Jeremy Lamb's miss. Quarter outside. Hornets with the rebound. Kaminsky's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Porter dishes to Morris, and Morris throws it down. So the basketball IQ on display for Otto Porter makes the right read there. Hornets trail by 19. And here's Walker. Dishes it to Williams. And the officials call over the back a little too aggressive there. Oh, picked up his fourth foul. Maybe have to scale back his aggressiveness with plenty of time left in this one. And he knocks down the first one. What about the finals for Mad Doris? 2-2, two, 1-1-1. Two, one, one, one. It's back. Most everyone pleased about it. What do you think? I love it because if you go to the old 2-3-2 two, two format, to me, that middle stretch where the team that's lower seeded literally has three straight opportunities to change a series with home court advantage that is unfair to the team that works so hard to get that top spot. Here's Walker. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's going to be on John Wall. And last season, Kemba Walker enjoying his best season to date. Many thought that he should have been on that Eastern Conference All-Star roster. And every year, someone's getting snubbed from being an All-Star. Last year, I felt like he was Walker. H had numbers that were comparable to the other great guards in the league. More importantly, he showed that he's become a leader on his team. And, and the one knock on Kemba really has always been the poor field goal percentage but you know he seems to have made some strides in that department and has become a much more efficient shooter and it's a big reason why I think he's playing the best basketball of his career and for Walker when you think about his improved shooting efficiency the interesting thing is that those improvements were from nearly every spot on the floor yeah and for so long you were just waiting for Kemba to make that jump and finally, he did. A much more complete player now than he was when he entered the league. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. He feeds it to Lamb. And as a point guard, you ran a lot of pick and rolls. It's screen roll play is the very basis of offensive basketball just how much nuance 
do you think is involved? And I know, but this is, I want to hear you, a successful pick and roll and pick and pop game. Okay, so uh, this just to give you some context on, on how involved the pick and roll is. Jeff Van Gundy has 300 pages of how on both sides of the ball you effectively run the pick and roll. You've got to be kidding. 300 pages oh, in his coaching book on how to deal with the pick and roll. And how about pick and roll defense? Oh, I mean, how about, about the same equal number of uh, pages, and right? I'll tell you this, you know, this is why the Chris Pauls of the world are, are so highly valued because it doesn't matter what scheme you throw at Chris, he comes off that pick and he, his eyes are up and he's surveying and in the most split second fashion, running through a series of reads and making the right decision every time. So here's the most basic play in basketball, yet if you go a layer deeper, it's maybe the most complex play in basketball. How to play it, how to defend it. I'll tell you, they say uh, the best things in life are the simple things in life. Mm -hmm. Pick and roll is the NBA at its absolute definition. Oh. Charlotte has gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. Charlotte calls timeout. And they're picking up a lot of fouls already in the penalty. Not a good sign. They need to focus on moving their feet and maintaining a good defensive position. Poke loose. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. And Jeremy Lamb, the bucket on the assist from Kid Gilchrist. Eight points for Lamb. You know, I like that decision there. Didn't try to do too much, just kicked it out for the open jumper. And Wall kicks to Beal. Here's the three. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Kid Gilchrist, the pass to Williams. No good on the triple. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Kicks it to Porter. Down low. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Well, just watch Markeith Morris play, and you can see why he's such a threat in the front court. He's got the size and speed to guard either the three or the four, and that gives you options as a coach defensively. Very smooth, easy jump shot. This is a really talented big. No good on the free throw. And Morris isn't shy about letting it fly from deep. Not the most consistent shooter from range, but... Norris, he'll make you pay if you leave him alone, and he'll certainly keep you honest defensively. Well, I think, Kevin, when Morris plays and moves, it just looks like he is a shooting guard with the fluidity of motion. You almost forget that he's a legit 6'10 because of the easy as putting the ball on the deck to create a shot. There are not a lot of players his size as comfortable doing the moves he does to 20, get open and find 20. looks. Charlotte calls timeout. Doris, we know so many teams rely on threes and layups. Is the mid-range game still relevant in the league? It certainly is to a guy like Sean Livingston. It is indeed. <laughs> I mean, that guy specializes in it. Good, good example. Yeah, listen, I, I like the mid-range. I don't think you can eliminate any of the three levels of the game, at the rim, in the mid-range, or at the three-point territory. To me, it's all important. I wonder if defenders sometimes, though, feel like that's that gray area where they don't know, should I go out? Should I play him only deep? I think sometimes that creates a lot of question. That mid-range game can be equally as effective. Well, you have so many organizations who philosophically will say, we only want point-blank layups or threes. And so if you've come or been exposed to that mindset, it sort of messes with you. I, I just, in the, in the analytics era, I would say I want balance. Yes. Now, here's Walker. He dishes it to Lamb. Zeller setting the pick for Lamb. A three-pointer, no good. And the Wizards with possession. They're on a 14-6 run. And Wall kicks to Morris. It's Beal on the wing. Oh, 
And that's a foul called on Bradley Beal. That is his first foul of the game. And that's an aggressive play to try to get the rebound. Just a little too aggressive. And the Wizards are going with a whole new group out there now. Charlotte's gone a disappointing 2-6 on three-point attempts here in the fourth. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Wizards. As one-sided as it gets today, you know, there were some dominant moments in there about every facet of this game for that team. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, it's hard to think of what didn't go right for them. Uh, game planning by the coaches, execution by the players, everything was just on target. And so that moves their record to 11 wins on the year. They can chalk this one up, but these two teams will see plenty more of one another before the season's over. And as we've come to expect, another big game tonight and an impressive exhibit for John Wall. Well, we're not going to be surprised when he turns in a game like this, but I thought he played especially well and a ton of productivity to go along with it. Free throw, good, Oubre. He's off on the second. Fast break, here they come. Here's Weber, got a hand on it. Here's Sodoronski. Screen by Smith. Here's Sodoronski. He's covered by Sessions. Smith with a wide open look. Hangs home the trifecta. And just a terrific job of taking care of business in front of the home fans. You can feel the love that this crowd has for them. I think the passion of their supporters made a huge difference in tonight's outcome. And I bet you'll never see too many guys who can put forth an effort on the boards like this one. Yeah, his production has been unbelievable. Really a testament to how much he cares about his craft. And so it's Washington easily grabbing this one. And the outcome of this one was never in doubt. And boy, they really put in a supreme effort. Uh, it just felt like once they had that lead and it was comfortable, they were not going to relinquish it. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. John, coach has talked about pace and space, and he wants you guys to play faster, and it looks like you're really following that lead. Oh, I'm in great pace, man. I, I, I kind of really got what he wants to talk about at pace. I don't mean he's pushing and looking to score every time, but pushing and getting post-ups early, things like that, get the defense moving so we won't have to go too many offensive sets. And um, I'm figured out a lot in the last few games. I've been having good games, and my teammates have been doing a great job. The percentages go up when you shoot early in the clock, and you were able to do it tonight. Thanks, John. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, great job. Thanks so much. And that about wraps it up. For Doris Burke, David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and the rest of our terrific 2K Sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. And now the award-winning Ernie Johnson will take it from here. We'll see you next time. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson, along with Kenny Smith and Shaquille O'Neal, seen here. Welcome back for the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, John Wall. You know, tonight he put up his high for the season. Found his rhythm, never let up. Just a terrific scoring effort all the way around. Once again, John Wall proving that he has developed into one of the NBA's true superstars. The choices he makes with the basketball in his hands are so intelligent. Great job tonight. The smartest player on the floor tonight. He had the defense guessing all night long. Reminds me of myself. His field goal percentage was all the way up in the 60s. Not that I like talking about myself, but it was a very steady night for him. You don't shoot well without working hard, and he never stopped battling to get the best look possible. Smart, efficient basketball he was playing. Thanks for showing me me. That's going to do it for our, our broadcast tonight. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the show, don't we, guys? It was great. Yeah. Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, and for Kevin Harlan and the entire 2K Sports crew. 
all 653,000 of them. Yeah, a lot. Hard working. A lot of people. Yeah. The long line at the buffet, though. Yeah. Shout out to the t poles man. Yes. Oh, I don't know sure. his name, but I know his face. I'm Ernie Johnson. See you next time.